Hello, welcome back. Scott from My Six Blades here. I've skeletonized ever so slightly the K bar. So I've got pinholes and a few cavities to save some weight. And I marked out the scales where I want the handle to sit on the nice grain of the wood. So I've picked the best section and I've missed the hole because these are all off cuts from work. And just basically give it the most pleasing grain pattern and now I'm gonna cut it out on the old band saw which has lost a tooth at the moment. Then I'm sitting on the cardboard from Sep's machete because it makes it down sight more comfy on the band saw because I'm sat on the back of it. So here we go. Piece of wood there we should push stick. I don't know where mine is at the moment. Now, in terms of safety on a band saw, one of the first things is to get the guard down. And you'll say, oh, look how high this guard only goes to there anyway. So, one little thing on this plot. Guard, you can't get the guard. This and the bearing set won't go down anywhere lower than about there. So I just leave it up, point of moving it around. Now, I've practiced a proper safe procedure at work where my big band saw, I mean, you can get it, it is actually how you leave it is right down here, and then you can lock it off as well so no one can fiddle. But this one doesn't seem to want to do that because he's a metal cut and band saw. Normally the work will be fed in this way. I've got them set up vertically. So it's actually in the wrong sort of setting at the moment, so that's where the guard isn't orientated in a way that that can come right down to there. There you go. I've seen a bit when I've cut the tape. Come on. There. Once you got the scales as a pair try and profile the very front of where the scales are because once they're on the blade okay once they're there and they're stuck on trying to sand and profile the wood when it's right next to the metal is a complete pig so if you've done 90% of the work now all you need to do is just dress it up with sandpaper so whilst there as a pair just go on the sander yeah and just give it a bit of a, a dress up like that so most of the work's done and then you can do the outside of the blade quite happily and you won't get anywhere near the steel so do it anyway now that I've got them in G clamps There's your warthog clamped up. Beauty getting three G clamps. I know I've got the voice free. I don't suppose any of you can begrudge me a little play. Sharpen this little beauty up. Where are we to? There. Done. We've also put a bit of a clippish sort of edge on it. So it works all the way up now. Cool. 
very heavy, thick. Look at this. Pretty chunky, look, five mil. I think it's time to play. See that side in a minute. Feels like a Hudson Bay, but bigger. <laughs> okay. Convex curling out of the wood there. Definitely me. <laughs> so thick, it's unbelievable. Oh, it's got one six blades. What I've got this morning is to take the K bar out of the G clamps. So here we go. Now this, we've just a purchase of three medium sized G clamps of which I've got two on here at the moment. Allow me to use the voice yesterday, whilst this was getting clamped. So, that was a nice little twist for me to be able to get on with something, even though I was epoxying a handle on, normally it would be stuck in the voice. Right, so what I'm going to do now is grind all that flat and then just basically custom crazy fi the handle and do what I normally do which is just get it so it's sculpted and I want to give it a nice flowing natural feel considering it's got those lines in the blade I want to bring that character into the into the handle and I'll just see how it goes. I've got to clear the uh, what are the lanyard holes of epoxy? I'll just gently draw those through, and I could end up with some really nice uh, power cord options through those three holes. I thought three would be quite cool, and I've saved weight by drilling the handle out a few times. But anyway, at the moment, there's my hand. It's still blade heavy, so I haven't overdone the weight in the handle. It's quite, it's quite amazing actually, look. I'm holding it on a pin. 
So, for anybody who wondered, uh, you know, who oh, you converted it from a stick to a thing, it'll all bounce, it'll all be the cock. Bloody great knife, look at the size of that, that blade. And it's really thick there. So, it should still be blade heavy, like it was originally. So I'll see you in a bit when I get this all ground up. See you in the chat. Okay, so now once I've ground the pins back so that the, the handle scales and it's basically more of a slab now, this is where I, what I want to do is give the blade some hand time, give it some, I don't know, I just, I, I feel that a custom blade deserves time, but not necessarily with a machine. Um, for something that's going to be used in the hand, and it's going to be used, you know, down and dirty one on one as a hand tool, I think it is owed a bit of time with a hand tool. So this is where I clean it all up, and I start playing with trying to get that to fit in your hand right using a hand tool. Once I'm up and running and, and I feel I've got the right contours, anything, then I'll blast on with the machine. I just think it's got more intrinsic sort of organic feel if I give it a rasp first. It's just me. drop straight in oh, well if you had smelly vision you'd know what the um, linseed oil would smell like but if you had feely vision that is just yeah yeah Go gently profile on the machine and then I'll do some testing and tweak it as I go. Rock on. <laughs> 